folks, today I would like to talk to you about four aspects of divine incarnation. One is, can a humanity recognize or identify a divine incarnation when it appears in the world? Second, can the humanity understand what a divine incarnation talks or means when that one appears and communicates or tries to communicate with the humanity? Third, can humanity decide when should a divine incarnation appear where it will appear, who will be the mother, father, who will be wife, children, etc., etc. And fourth, can humanity say what a divine incarnation should do or should not do, how it should do? and so on. So these are the four things I thought I will share my views on this. All these things are based on my own spiritual experience. Even the notion of spiritual experience in a divine incarnation communicates to you, it's very, very difficult to understand. Let's begin. First, can the humanity recognize a divine incarnation? Let's take example. Let's take Jesus Christ. He said, I am the life. Of all the things, one of the very, very important things, uncorrupted things in my opinion, which is in the Bible, is, is Jesus Christ's statement, I am the life. Most of the people, including his disciples, thought that he is just the human body, the body that is visible to them through their, to their five senses and the mind. But life is something you can experience but you cannot, when, he, when Jesus Christ identified himself with a life, can anybody understand? Also he said, my father is in heaven. Can anybody understand who this person is talking about? What is he talking about? All philosophy. That is exactly what Jews did when he was there when Jesus Christ was there or appeared. They could not understand what he is talking about. They could understand who he is he and so on. I have said in many videos that there are three divine lights or jyotis which you cannot see with your five senses, especially your eye and the mind. And even when the third eye opened, you cannot see that those lights. For you, for you to see, witness that, you have to your seventh chakra should be opened, or seventh seal, as it is said in the Bible. Now, after three divine lights, there is one which is a golden light, and I said in many videos, even before I came to know about what Jesus Christ said or any such thing or what the Hindus told in their scriptures, uh, scriptures, I realized through my own spiritual experience that golden light is a life principle. And in some of the Christian tradition, they show that exactly Jesus Christ is 
the golden light. But they didn't understand the, the relationship between the, that light, the golden light, and the life principle, life tattva, as they call in India. And I also said that that is the golden light is the unconditional love, uncorrupted love. It is the joy, the joy that you cannot experience through your mind and your five senses. So, did Jews understand or recognize Jesus Christ? Not at all. I'm sure you would have read that or heard about it in the Bible or whoever is preaching the Bible. The reason, main reason is that you see through your five senses and your mind a divine incarnation. When you see, it appears like it's just a normal human body. And through your mind you and your five senses, you may identify or recognize that he is a Jew or an Indian or a um, uh, man from Russia or, or from Middle East and so on and so on. So it is extremely difficult for human beings, almost impossible, unless you are gifted to be totally open-minded that you cannot recognize a divine incarnation. Same thing is true with Buddha. And Buddha, now that they are talking a lot about Buddha, and there is a, even there is there is a whole lot of people worshiping Buddha. But when Buddha was uh, when he realized who he is, and he taught, and in fact, even before that, a lot of disciples left him. Nobody really understood what he was talking about. Then immediately they will start worship, worshiping. Only after so about five thousand five hundred years or so later, it was uh, Buddha was promoted by a king called Ashoka, Indian king Ashoka. Only then he became known. Otherwise, without that promotion, probably nobody would have thought that Buddha did something, realized something very profound. In Hinduism, they say that, I mean, in the northern India, they worship, they think that Rama and Krishna are divine incarnations. But there is no historical fact that they lived in real, in real human body. Vyasa, one of the rishis, created Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, and I believe by the Bhagavad Gita. And he saw through his third eye, probably, Krishna in the context of Kushetra war. That war is real, but the role of Krishna in that war, Kurukshetra war, and also what he said, all those things, it just, there were no historical record. Same thing is about Rama, Valmegi, another Rishi, Indian Rishi, wrote about Rama who lived in a totally different era, what, what the Hindus call Yuga. Those days there were no written scriptures. How can somebody say without seeing through 
the third eye or revelation as it is called in western culture among christians how can we visualize or talk about the life of rama so rama and krishna it's not clear they appear to be mythological characters very useful through that lot of people learned a lot of good things also the moment they started worshiping they learned something they should not do so can anybody recognize rama and krishna all that they know is the form created by various people who lived after valmiki and vyasa maybe he did he said something somebody else created some form and so on so on if krishna comes back as a divine incarnation as they say kalki is the 10th avatar of vishnu that is krishna will they be able to recognize they will expect exactly same form same glory as foretold by vyasa point is that it's ext- extremely difficult to recognize or identify a divine incarnation because you are seeing through your five senses and you are seeing through various ideas in your mind these ideas have come from your religious books bible quran or uh bhagavata or ramayana and so on and lot of people over the time they twist they think of their own ideas about these things that's told by rishis and like just like preachers and pastors in christianity do so lot of preachers lot of swami jis in india they preach about rama krishna and so on in southern india on the other hand they worship shiva basically they know shiva only through some saints and also they worship vishnu they know about vishnu only whatever some other saints experienced but exactly that's what in humanity's mind that is exactly what they are looking for and can a new divine incarnation for this era appears they will exactly try to see the comparison between a previous incarnation or in the case of for example jesus they will expect and they are expecting a second coming of jesus in exactly in the same body or some people think that he will be a jew he will be born as a jew israel all these things are ignorances so the point is you can never ever identify or recognize a divine incarnation when that one appears the next point is can the humanity understand what a divine incarnation says for example take jesus christ he said my kingdom is not of this world he also said my father is in heaven immediately people thought that just like we all have a father in this world he as a father a human father in heaven and where he is living and then he has come from there and he is the only son of that godly father so this is what they will understand because that's what that is the best that they can understand using their mind and th- through their life experience what they hear from religious books from others 
rabbis and so on and so on. Same thing is true with Kalki, one of the divine incarnation that is expected by Indians. <laughs> they say that in Kalki Purana, it is said that Kalki will ride over a white horse. If any the divine incarnation can appear in this can in this in this uh, era in a horse, but still they believe that the real meaning of that is as I told in some of my videos that white horse is is a representation of the white light, one of the divine jodhis or lights. The other one is the red one. And same thing about Maitreya or Medhi from Islam. Whatever is written in Quran and the other other things that followed, that is exactly what will happen. So, in, in the case of uh, uh, Christianity, there is some kind of a revelation, a revelation chapter. It's like a third eye. The best case is the third eye vision, out of inspiration. Someone has seen this. Some of the folks have seen this. Revelations and dictated. And exactly that's what they are, the Christians are expecting. You cannot understand what a divine incarnation is talking about. For example, I said, Jesus Christ and Kartikeya and also Vishnu are different names for only one thing that is a golden light. All, the, all three of them are incarnation of that golden light, the love principle, unconditional love principle, life principle. That is the principle of protection in this world. Can you understand this? How will you understand this? Unless you have experienced those three divine lights. Unless you have experienced the golden light after opening the seventh chakra. <coughs> it is said that the seventh seal will be open in Bible it is said Seventh seal will be open, seventh trumpet will be open, then Christ will appear. What is it? Seventh trumpet, seventh seal. Jesus it was I was told, he said, unless and there is something called a spirit body, unless you are born as a spirit body when you are alive. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You have to be reborn not from the human, this human birth to a spirit birth. That's what he meant by saying reborn, second, second birth or whatever. And but people misunderstood that, and uh, and. They thought that just immerse somebody in a water and then he is reborn, he is second birth. So you will reach heaven. So did, can anybody understand what Jesus really said? No. It's a totally different thing. But people can understand only 
up to the level that their mind allows them to see. So you cannot understand what a divine incarnation talks about. You can understand what when they interpret, when they say what this humanity should do, then what is the nature of why people are doing, why people are behaving like this? When they interpret from the viewpoint of the spirit world or kingdom of God, that you, can, you should understand. But they will not understand even that. I have been saying it is a division among human beings that is creating this world, creating this horror, all the wars, so on. Did anybody understand that? It's, a, it's something that they, they can see. Racial division, religious definition. I said, God is undefined from the viewpoint of human mind, but is real for those whose seventh chakra is open. Okay, let's go to the third point. Can humanity decide when will a divine incarnation come? Kalki, it's told by Kalin, the Kalki Purana, written by a human being, that he will be born after about four lakh years. And another place, Vishnu, I was, I was told, he said, whenever there is a calamity, ignorance, bad things going on in the world, I will be born to collect that. So you cannot decide when a divine incarnation will appear based on some religious textbooks. In Kalki's, Kalki Purana, it seems, even when he will be born, what will be his horoscope, astrological horoscope, what is his mother's name, father's name, wife's name, and so on, where he will be born, etc. How can people even if they see through their the third eye, it's impossible to really decide when can a divine incarnation appear. It will appear whenever it's needed in this world. And the fourth thing is, can humanity say what a divine incarnation should do, what it should not do, how it should do, and so on. Let's see. They say in Hindu scripture, Hindus say that when he comes, when Kalki comes, the tenth avatar of Vishnu comes, he will destroy everybody else. He will establish the Hindu Dharma. He will he will destroy Christian, Christians and Muslims will fight within each other and they kill each other. And finally, people who are remaining, they will surrender to Hindu Dharma. That's what they say. And Christians say, he will come to bless all the Christians, all the Christians who have faith in the Christianity and in Christ, Jesus Christ. And he will establish the era of Christianity in this world. Every religion will think, is thinking that what, who is going to be their divine incarnation according to their religious texts, according to their culture, and what they will be doing, and how will be they will be doing. For example, I said this world will be destroyed by the go by the red light, the Shiva principle, just like golden light is the life principle. The red light is as a principle of Shiva, and is a principle which creates this appearance in this world. And also it destroys. And 
I said there will be a destruction. Tremendous amount of discretion and, and um, distraction. And immediately some people think that you, how, who are you to say this? You are just a YouTube video publisher. How can you do that? Can you do that? When they say that, they are seeing only my human body. They don't know who I am. I'm not going to be doing by creating an organization, constructing an army, bhattas, chelas, and so on, apostles, and so on, and change everybody. No. I will use the three divine lights. That's my real body in the kingdom of God, in your world. I will use that. Nobody can recognize that, that I am using it. You cannot even understand what are those three divine lights, yogis and their functions in humanity. So folks, these are some of the thoughts that I want to share with you. I have discussed all these things in a lot of details in two playlists about the, about the divine incarnation, there is a there is a playlist, and also I talked about various ignorances people have about divine incarnation. For example, can you worship divine incarnation? What is really second coming of Jesus Christ? What is what is really the Kalki Avatar? What will Maitreya do? Where is Shambhala village? What is Medhi will be doing? There is going to be only one divine incarnation for this era. And that one will destroy all the hurdles. Everyone who is ignorant, who is preventing the creation of the yuga of unconditional love what is called Satya Yuga by Hindus. I talked about all those things. I'm not, I'm not asking you to believe in me. You cannot, you can never ever understand my spiritual experiences. You can only understand what some, some people say, Samadhi state, a third eye opening and various things. They will say that exactly there is something beyond human mind. But what is exactly beyond human mind? None of the Swamiji's at the preaching. They are all copying whatever the religious textbooks are telling you. But there is one way you can recognize a divine incarnation and what he says and what he will be doing. That is open mind, total open mind. It's not a belief. Belief means you believe something is true or something is not true. But open mind means don't believe anything or don't believe what I am saying. Don't disbelieve what I am saying. Be open mind. That is what will allow you to recognize a divine incarnation and what he or she says and, and what he will be doing, how he will be doing and so on. Folks, that's what I want to talk to you. I will provide a link to the two playlists I mentioned, mentioned here and if you are interested, I'm not going to force you. I never forced you from my first video in 2018. I'm not going to force you. It's up to you. But whatever you do, you are responsible for your action. And be open-minded and try to understand the videos to the extent that is possible. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask or comment or contact me 
through the email that I'm providing or the Facebook link that I'm giving in the description box. Talk to you soon, folks.